To buy or not to buy, that is the question. Or really, the question is, what is everyone so bent out of shape over RB1 for? Obviously, the answer is buy it. It is a great set for new players. And that's the thing. New players should be buying it. It's not a set that everyone should buy. It's not a set that you know we should go out and buy boxes for if we are invest in the game since the day one it came out because day one we already had bt1 we had all the way to bt5 what this set did and what everyone's so upset about is it reprinted a bunch of things that caused a drop in the value of them and everyone's upset about this for weird reason this set is it was announced in Japan. It was announced to be a reprint set. It was announced to be reprints. We were all excited about it. And when they poured it over to the English version, they cut all that. They cut the reprints. They cut everything. They were going to maybe do some stuff and, you know, promos and stuff over here. And we got bent out of shape because the set was basically just going to be the new Ghost Game cards. And we didn't want that. We, did, we wanted the reprints. We were playing them. We were using them. They were a big deal. Uh, because product was scarce and we couldn't really get product for one uh, BT1 through three uh, and then so on. So a lot of guys just, you know, were annoyed with that. It was terrible. What did Bandai do? Bandai listened. They heard us, our complaints. They said, hey, they want these reprints. They're taking them back. They want them. That's great. Except for the fact that caused a delay in the product that ultimately resulted in now People don't necessarily want those reprints anymore because the meta has changed and now we <laughs> aren't really playing a lot of those cards quite as much as we were to begin with. Uh, and that, So now everyone's complaining about the fact, oh, we got all these reprints, the values tanked, because sadly enough, people play card games like it's a stock market. Uh, like, a, you know, everybody wants to buy their cards at cheap. Eep and then sell high. They want to get rid of their cards. They want to be reimbursed. They want it to be value. They want their cards to have high value and everything like that. Uh, and that's just the wrong way to look at something like this. This is a card game. Uh, it's, my personal viewpoint is the card shouldn't cost an arm and a leg in order for me to be able to play it. Uh, that's what makes this set so great. It's that it is a reprint set for the purpose of getting new players access to old cards that used to cost them like 60 to a hundred plus dollars to buy the playset. I mean, buying four cards and having to spend almost a hundred bucks and that's, you know, a lighter end on some of them. And that was, that's just absurd. I mean, right now people can't really play arena or death X because of that price point, it's like, I mean, Rena for one, you want, you probably want the playset if you're playing an Ult Force deck or you want that. And it's like, I get the Alt Art being 40, 50 bucks. Sure. Given Alt Art of the Secret being that much, but the Secret itself should never have reached that drastic a price. And that happened to several of them. Death X did that. Uh, Omnivon Zork Defeat, who is in this reprint set, did that. And I'm not against having high-value cards. I mean, I personally own several couple hundred-dollar cards from or Magic. I pulled a Lorcana Chase card the other day, uh, and it's I like those having that value. If in the event that I would resell them, I'm not going to, uh, except maybe the Lorcana one. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with it yet. But the problem is, I want my magic ones that I have that are that price to drop in value because I want a reprint set I that reprints those. Sadly, the reserve list, they're not getting it. It's not going to happen. Uh, but I want it because I want those cards accessible to new players in a way that doesn't hurt the game or the company. Right now, the accessibility of those cards are there if you want to proxy it. Proxy the cards, it's free. Because they're primarily only used in a format that's casual and not tournament sanctioned. Uh, and that, in my opinion, 
is a sad way to go about it. I'd rather the company make money by printing them into the ground and people buying the product than people hoarding, you know, only ha- having the copies that are expensive and then people proxying it or complaining that, oh, I can't play that, so it's terrible, it's oppressive. Uh, and that's the issue I have with a lot of the mindset a lot of guys have uh, with TCGs these days is, you know, people are in, in, acting like it's my thing. I want my alt arts expensive. I don't want my base arts. Uh, the Ghost Omni, the Gold Alpha, you know, those chase cards that were one in it, uh, X number of cases, those can be expensive. Those deserve to be expensive. Uh, but they're alt arts of already playable cards. They're alt arts of cards we have regular versions of. And therefore, they should indeed be uh, good to go. Uh, but anyways, let's talk specifically about the RB1 set, because that's what we're here for. We are here to talk about that and why it's a solid set to buy and not just something that you should ignore. Uh, obviously, invested players who've been playing for a while have already got their play sets of most of the reprints that they care about. And you guys, go ahead, just buy your singles for your uh, for your new cards, your new Ghost Game cards that you want, if any. I mean, you don't have to worry about it. But for the new people out there who don't have any of the cards in the set or don't have a number of the cards or even do just want to buy the singles, this is a good set to buy singles from because of that drop in price and value. It makes it easy to obtain these cards. They could be future relevant. They may not, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, So let's talk about that. We're looking at it now, and here we go. The card list, I'm actually using uh, the official Digimon website. Normally, I would use like DigimonCard.dev to look at different stuff, but they didn't have the... They only had the new cards on it. They didn't have the uh, reprints listed on there as well. So you're looking at it, and like, you got the new cards. You've obviously got the ghost game, fun little stuff. This is fun because, personally, I like the idea... I like the fact that this set gave us the ch- uh, the Megas, the level 6s for each of these. Uh, Jellymon, Gammon, and Goromon. They're all just kind of fun. It's fun, new. It's fun to play with the uh, new series that came out. Uh, they gave us some of the reprints. Kind of weird in that they did them like this, where they... Uh, switched to RB1 uh, for the, some of the promo reprints. Uh, this is a... I personally really like this Agumon art. Uh, but this promo Agumon is common in Greymon decks for, like, ever. It's going to be a good card. It's going to be good for Greymons going forward, uh, regardless. And it's just nice, because it's always good to have that, you know, plus 2k, plus whatever. Uh, just solid staying there. So that promo is always good. It's had... Uh, one or two other reprints that were kind of nice too. Personally, I like the re- I like the red border from when we got them in the uh, gift boxes of 2022. But I do like the art on this one, and it that is really nice. Uh, also giving us this Greymon uh, reprint, less relevant now that you know no one's playing the Agabon deck. Uh, but who knows? This may come up later. There may be a deck later, or you might just want to put. Build a casual deck that's fun to play with this Greymon. Uh, so getting the reprints of these promos was nice because these promos weren't exactly easy to get in the beginning anyways. Uh, so it's cool to get new players being able to have access to it. Uh, this this Gammon is also a promo reprint. Uh, but we got s- the fact that it gave us Serious Mon and gave us Amphimon and our boy Derabitmon on is pretty great it's fun also look you know everybody loves new numamon cards right er- everyone you know sukumon numamon it's always fun to have new cards for these guys right <laughs> yeah it's it's funny though but it is great it is nice we got these new cards also some of these like alt arts for these look good like look at this arbitmon like look at that uh and then you've obviously you got the you know dark forms of gammon's itch evolutions which bring which gives us Sarktorismon alt art is looking clean. I mean, that is nice. And you're looking at it, so you got here and all that. Uh, but more importantly, getting past all the brand new stuff, uh, what we're looking at is the reprints that 
is why the packs being full of these is kind of bad for players who've been around since the beginning because they've already got these. They've already got their place, or even competitive players, they've already bought them. Uh, you've got Upamon, uh, one of the best uh, blue eggs that exist in the game. This card, most people who are running this card already have their place that they own their place that it's and so they don't care to open it uh but new players this is good not only that it makes them ch super cheap a lot of these cards are like dirt cheap to buy the rbo one versions which is great uh the smagna angemon again is a card that people have their place that's already but being able to pick one up for like two bucks uh versus the like 15 they used to be and now the alts are 15 because of this makes it more attainable for those of us who want to alt art it uh it makes it really nice uh this deck this card's use is not as high right now but who knows or probably who knows this card's just a really powerful card i mean an on play to recover one uh and it's even 6k which makes it kind of easy to bring back if it happens to be like flame hell scythe brings back and stuff so this card is actually pretty good uh, for decks that aren't going to care about the Digivolution line and are just going to hard play their level 5s. And it's a card that was strong to begin with and it's likely to be strong again if a new deck arises that wants to just on-play level 5s. Uh, and personally, my the security control deck I have still fares pretty well against pretty much any at my locals so it's always going to be a good card and you know it's just a good card unless you're playing super meta heavy in your locals this card will be good and even in meta heavy it's not that bad you got reprints of ty tk mimi all three of these were just good memory setters that needed to be reprinted because people just didn't have them uh couldn't have them Personally, I only own one copy of Ty, and I and I'm like I have like playsets of vast majority of the sets, uh, but it just wasn't in me to buy the rest of the playset for this. So it's nice to be able to pick them up now. Again, there, uh, this is just a cool alt art for this Vidramon. It's not actually like uh, you know big deal to have this card because it's really not that great, but I just really like this alt art. Uh, I'm a big fan of any of the ones that kind of go back like this this just looks really good to me looking at some of these other eh, you know this was all this other one was always a good rookie uh this demi marimon another one that a play set of them ran you like 20 dollars 20 plus dollars on the cheap end for an egg because this is was by far like the go-to purple egg and it's just like being able to get this at a much more reasonable price, like spending maybe four bucks after shipping to get a place of this is much nicer than paying like 20 bucks for a digi egg like that. That was terrible. Uh, and this one's great. Always going to, always going to be a good egg for purple. Like that's, that's never not going to be a good egg for purple jamming Vmon always going to be good. You know, Rookie Rush is not as big a thing now, but as we get armor support, as we get anything, that card's just always going to be good. Lilithmon, still a very powerful card. The card was powerful when it came out, powerful in the following sets to BT, especially BT5 when we had Mega Dip, Digimon Fusion. Cards kind of died off, not really played as much that much these days, not really used too much. Uh, it has seen a couple of ill niche decks popping up, uh, being played at big events and stuff, which is cool, uh, because this card is very powerful. Uh, the biggest issue with a lot of cards like this one, and Magna Angemon and stuff from the early sets, is that they didn't have the support like we have now. Support for decks like Jessmon and Ult Force and uh, Shine Greymon and all these other, and Mirage Galgamon and all that, are just so insane like the you know the support for these decks is just crazy good and it makes a lot of things so hyper efficient uh that kind of makes the memory gauge almost irrelevant and it hurts decks that 
tried to use cards from the older sets because those sets didn't have the buildup, they didn't have the like hyper efficiency of memory usage that made them great. And Lilithmon kind of suffers from that. But if any like any sort of good support comes in, this card could very easily be a go to uh, Mega again because this this is a very good card. What it does is very good, and if we can get it a support that's really good, really purple option heavy again, this card could be could see a lot more play once again. It is a very good card still. Uh, a delicate plan, you know, another good card. I mean, just if you're trying to build a deck that is red and wants to like, you know, OTK. You know, all these cards are really good for like, you know, the casual meta. You know, your casual meta, your locals, and delicate plant's still a good card. Uh, a lot of cards and a lot of decks have protection built in on them, anyways. Uh, but if you're still trying to build that OTK stack deck or something, or just maybe you want a one of delicate plan, just any event that you feel you need that extra level of protection, this card is still really good. Uh, to stop if you're checking like five. If you're trying to check like three or, or security, maybe even all five in one swing, this card is great to have because option cards throw you for a loop all day. Uh, you never know what's going to hit that security, and it could be the randomest thing. And some just cards just don't necessarily have the protection to be able to deal with it. And this card's still a really great card. Hidden did you want uh, hidden potential discovery? Still great card, limited to one for a reason, uh, which really means you probably don't want to buy this set hoping to get that card. Uh, but it is a cool card to get reprinted and everything. These hybrids, not so relevant. You know, nothing like that. This is he's had a couple of reprints, which makes it kind of sad that he's in here. Uh, Blinding Ray and Jack Ray are just still actually solid uh, options, just not really used right now. Lusamon, not really used, but I re again, I remember this card being like $40, like, it's nice to be able to get ourselves uh, cards like this that are solid and good. Also, with new cards being able to free play level 3s, this card can be a good random 1 of in the deck to bring back, oh, I get to free play level 3, here's a Lusamon, I get to recover 1, it's a good little say, it's good comeback. It's solid to have. Uh, it's a nice little one of to have in decks. So it's cool that he got a reprint, make it more affordable. Uh, and going down, Blitz Omni. This card's a finisher in a lot of red decks. This card is nice to have, nice to have access to. Wasn't that hard to buy if you wanted to buy the single, but it's a nice card to open when you don't have all these cards to begin with. Same to be said about Zork Defeat. This card is not see play anymore. It does not see the play that everything else does. It is not Death Exmon, but it was, it's not Quartzmon, but it was the big bad level 7 before those guys. This card is a great card to have in a deck if you don't have those super powerful top ends and you want a level 7. This card is solid because as security, it pops up to the field, it doesn't do anything, uh, it just free plays you a body that's pretty bit decent size and can swing for checks and, you know, win games. Now, that being said, on deletion, this card blows up one of your opponent's suits. That's great. So he gets. Str so he's like, what is he? A th I believe he's like 13k, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he's a 13k. But if you swing him into your opponent's security and you hit like, for a bad example, we'll use this Omnimon Zort. Not likely to see unless the guy's randomly playing Lilith Loop. Or maybe the Chessmon deck. I've planned it in my Chessmon deck because it's fun. Uh, but it, you swing it in, it dies, and then you pop their guy with a massive stat. Uh, pop one of their guys. It's great. Not only that, if this card happens to be in your hand, obviously we prefer it to be in security 9 times out of 10. But on that chance that it's in your hand, and your po the fact that this card deletes an opponent's tamer is actually highly relevant. And I've personally used it several times in games. Where I've digivolved into defeat because I need and I needed to be able to digivolve into defeat to get rid of a security or get rid of a tamer. I mean, 
we got decks like hunters and blue flare and you know cross and all these that are so tamer reliant and heavy that any card that can do that there's a reason black core gram on x is a like bane of people's existence it's a great card and then you've got cards that are reprints from like the star decks kaiser nail's fun if you play king waymon i'm just saying i i enjoy that deck actually i need to probably throw together a deck profile for that one i just because i really enjoy that deck it takes wins uh kakai's breath is a great seven drop option if you still want to play bl star and want to play with the blue package so you can play this card it's a good one it's solid uh this is a card that people are kind of mad about the uh price hits on because they can't sell these for what they used to be. This card used to be super valuable because it was in the starter deck. And it is a great Greymon because it's just a Greymon you get play and you get a security plus one. Uh, makes your Greymon decks just hit that much harder. And it, so it is solid. It is great. Um, actually kind of a funny tech for an ancient Greymon deck. Because it's got Greymon its name and ancient Grey. But that's a, that's a different story. Uh... We don't really mess with. Uh, and then, But again, the promos. Sadly, this one got limited. Uh, but again, these promos were hard to come by. I mean, this one, Diaboramon deck. If you're building Diaboramon, if you love Diaboramon, you need a place of these. We got the reprint with the black border and stuff with the uh, gift box 2022. But again, it's cool to be able to open this card in a pack because this card was ridiculously expensive. And you wanted four of them to play Diabormon. That deck's not that great, but it is nice to be have access to that Diabormon again in a more affordable way. Uh, this Pulse Mall was really good for a while. It was like a twenty dollars card for a while. Uh, super good. Uh, sadly, it's kind of died off in playability. This card, this Palmon, uh, is actually solid. If I mean Digiverse is not something we. You do uh, too much these days. But it's fun to see those decks resurface, redo. Uh, but it's, again, promos are nice to be able to get reprints and attain. Because the promos were hard to get to begin with. And they end up ver such variable pricing. And prices fluctuates on them so much. That it's nice to be able to get them in a set like this. If you're new to the game and weren't able to get them when they first came out. Uh, memory boost. The alt art memory boosts that are in the packs you can pick up at like Walmart or Target or big box stores are beautiful. Like those alt arts look so good and it is so nice to see those that it is great. Uh, obviously, a lot of guys think these are less relevant because the training uh, cards are coming out. And the thing is, those cards have different uses than these do. And the while, yes, these are going to be phased out a little bit because of those, they are still going to be good to have. They're still going to be good cards to be using. And a lot of decks will probably end up trying to find a way to run both. Uh, I'm going to try and find a way to run both of my Ancient Greymon deck. I'm going to mess with numbers and ratios and stuff to use both because they're just salt. I like cards to have both of. Uh, because they're both used for different things. I mean, this one just gives you two memory and digs four deep. The other one reduces digivolution cost, so the versatility of the delay is not quite the same. Uh, and then, this set also gave us, I believe, our first printing in the U.S. For, and English-speaking country is where for Sirius Mon, Amphimon, and Diarbimon promos. And that is another thing that's absolutely great that we got because we need to see these promos. We never know where we're going to get them. They could be box toppers. They could be uh, buy a box promos that sadly LGS don't always give out uh, because it's just a way of things. Uh, sometimes they give them out in weird ways and not actually with them. Sometimes the LGS just doesn't get them. I mean, it is so awkward getting product for an LGS for these games and the support. And it, is a issue and i say that as somebody who's been on the back end working for an lgs before uh that being now let's go back then just finish this up 
obviously if you enjoyed this video you know, uh, if, or any of my other videos you know like subscribe uh, let me know in the comments what you think let me know your opinions obviously I'm not hating on the guys who dislike the set or hate the fact they dropped the value of their cards uh, that is a thing that is it's a valid opinion I mean but my point here is people need to buy the cards people need to be able to have access to the cards if they're new to the game so they can play them when they become relevant again and you know be able to play them in casual settings it is important that we all have access to every card it is important that we all can play the game and enjoy it and build this community up and keep this game going uh, and I want you to buy the product because I want to support the game. I want. I love this game. I want it to keep going. Uh, I want LGSs to keep carrying the product. Uh, so I don't want them to have mass back stock because you're not buying the packs. Uh, and I'm not saying go out and just buy a case of this set. I wouldn't. Uh, even if if I were a new player, I'd treat it like any other pack. I'd treat it like any set. I would buy like two boxes uh, to get the bulk of my commons and uncommons. Uh, as play sets so that I can play whatever deck from that set or pr I want to play. Uh, and then I would buy the singles for the rest of it. Uh, being that I've got play sets of most sets uh, from BT4 to now, uh, I, or mostly complete play sets of these sets, I'd lean more toward just buying them from Walmart myself uh, for a couple packs and so I could get those cool alt arts without having to pay the secondary market prices on them uh right especially right now um but the, that doesn't mean it's not great it is great let me know in the comments how you feel about the set i mean let me oh how you feel about what you think uh any potential people looking at the set should know because really at the end of the day we're here to talk and share and debate our opinions and help each other get a better idea how we want to do things and make things better but for now like i said like so if, like and subscribe hopefully i'll put out another you know video soon where say you know another deck pro profile personal uh personally that's really all i tend to think of off the top of my head but if anyone else wants to have another video about something if you want me to talk about something specific uh i can do that that'd be great uh, always looking for ideas for content and what I want to do. It's kind of why my videos are kind of few and far between because I got to build a deck and then I got to test the deck and everything. Uh, so only doing deck profiles is kind of limiting and not very helpful. But I felt with all the controversy going around with this set, this video needed to be presented. Uh, so let's have fun, Digidestin.